The media fixation over disgruntled ex-LAPD officer Chris Dorner got me thinking about how law enforcement, be it police officers or federal agents, deal with these types of threats. The tactics used against Dorner made me instantly think of Waco, Texas. And in case you're a younger viewer and you've never heard of the Waco massacre, let's take a look back at what happened. In February of 1993, U.S. agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms attempted to issue a search warrant at Mar Mount Carmel Center Ranch, the property of a religious group called Branch Davidians, over a tip that the group was stockpiling illegal weapons. That search failed, and what ensued was an exchange of gunfire, leaving four agents and six Branch Davidians dead. What followed thereafter was a tense standoff and a media frenzy. <laughs> February 28th, the bloodiest day in the history of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. As the siege entered its third week, the FBI turned up the heat, blasting loud music and chanting to the compound over powerful loudspeakers, now and then playing recorded phone negotiations with Koresh to make sure cult members knew what he was saying. As the fifth week began, it was evident federal forces were losing patience. All he is is a cheap thug who interprets the Bible through the barrel of a gun. The siege against the compound lasted 51 long days until finally a second assault was initiated by federal agents. Donned in full combat gear, they used military tanks to bust holes in the house and pump in tear gas. And then this happened. A mysterious fire that destroyed the entire compound, resulting in 76 men, women, and children tragically being burned alive. So, U.S. law enforcement, FBI agents, and observers from the Army's secret Delta Force Commando Unit besieged a compound where not a single person inside had ever been accused of committing a violent crime before the initial raid. Of course, the media account of what happened was that the Branch Davidians were a dangerous, trigger-happy cult, and their leader, David Koresh, was a madman who at the very last minute incited his clan to kill themselves. In fact, the Justice Department under the Clinton administration took the official position that all the deaths were simply the result of a mass suicide. The federal authorities under then-Attorney General Janet Reno repeatedly denied that they were responsible for starting the fire. But despite the official government line of deny, 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 evidence eventually came to light that proved their culpability. First of all, infrared video shot by the FBI flying over the compound in the days leading up to the massacre showed automatic gunfire being directed from the tanks before any shots were fired from the compound. Furthermore, visual evidence showed a tank deliberately running over one or more bodies of sect members. Despite the overwhelming evidence, it took six years for the FBI to even admit that their explosive munitions started the fire. And to this day, there's a total lack of accountability for these crimes. The FBI stonewalled an investigation that led to a whitewash of the government's actions at Waco. Interestingly enough, the FBI official accused of blocking the investigation, Thomas Kelly, was later tapped to serve as the lead investigator for the Joint Congressional Intelligence Panel, the same panel that whitewashed the role federal agencies played in the events leading up to 9-11. This type of overzealous reactionary behavior is nothing new with law enforcement. The methods used at Waco mirror how similar high-tension situations are dealt with by federal officials today. The question is, if this is how they'll deal with a small group of armed religious fanatics when push comes to shove, how will they deal with a mobilized rebellion from the working class? Would it be any different?